Oh, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. And um, if you're listening to this later on or another time, welcome to you too. We're going to talk today to the photography movement and we have two amazing people. And I will say that because NSAAD has partnered very, very much with this wonderful organization. I'm going to ask Steve and Nicole to introduce themselves. Um, but before we do, I just say that I'm from NSAAD. Um, I will be a uh, hosting this evening and if you have any questions later on about NSAD or the work that we're doing with the photography movement please make sure you put them in the chat and do that whilst we're talking so really looking forward to your questions but straight away if I can go to uh, Steve Steve Wallington if you could just say a few words about you <laughs> thank you Seth, and thanks for very much for letting us um, be part of this talk um, I am Steve Wallington and I'm the creative director of the photography movement and the show and tell movement, also show and tell movement, the show and tell project. Um, I have been, well, yeah, founded this with Nicole uh, and the photography movement is something that passionate and I'll talk about in a minute. So, yes. Thank me. you. And um, Nicole, Nicole Elias. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sophie, for having us. Um, my name is Nicole and I'm the programme director for Show and Tell, um, which is a project which launched about two years ago, which focuses on the well-being and how creativity can support that for young people. Oh, that's fantastic. And what I would like to do is just ask you a little bit more, um, a little bit more about the photography movement, and then we'll move on to show and tell. What we hope tonight, what, through this um, 30 minute live, is just to talk a little bit about how photography can work in primary schools mostly. Uh, I know that lots of the work you do with all different ages, um, but what we'll do, I hope the takeaway tonight will be how we may use photography in primary schools. But let's begin with, um, could you say a little bit more about um, the photography movement and the work that you do or, and show and tell through with mental health, please, how that might impact and support. I'm actually going to begin by how photography affected me as a young person. Um, go all the way through. So photography was a big passion of mine. My father used to be in the print industry and uh, he used to print all his own prints and love photography. So I was very passionate at a very young age. And then uh, an art teacher at my school, I, I, I left school with very few um, O-levels and my art teacher was the one that inspired me to go to art school. So I love my art teacher for that. Then I went to art school Went, went into the sort of advertising creative industry, but then I got given a camera by my grandfather, my, sorry, by my, my, my daughter's mother's gr uh, grandfather, who gave me his camera, and I took pictures of my daughter, and that got me, he had a 35 millimeter Pentax Asahi, got me inspired by photography, and then I took pictures of my daughter, but I also went and took pictures I broke up with my with, with my daughter's mother and I went on a bit of a pilgrimage, went and photographed in Australia and shot the landscapes, created my own book and did a book on photography, which was landscapes, no people in it. And then I went and climbed Kilimanjaro and it was all about people who helped me to get to the top of that mountain. So photography has been a big part of my life and helped me all the way through. And then I had tragedy in my life when the photography movement was founded, when I lost two, two dear friends uh, who took their life. And with Scott, who was, um, whose brother took his life as a twin, we established the photography movement. Scott was the picture editor of, of uh, the European. He loved photography and we established the photography movement. And we worked with Calm, who are a suicide prevention charity. And we did an exhibition with Getty's, Getty's Image, and we had great photographers like Rankin Martin Parr who contributed to an exhibition which was about asking men what does it mean to be a man in the modern world. So that was how we actually began the photography movement. And then I then 
um, me and Nicole have worked before together. We started then thinking more about other subjects, not just about men. Um, I went to work in a school in Tottenham who had young children. Uh, they, they were actually 16 to 18 year olds, but I was inspired by a young student at uh, a, a university with me who said that she had lost two young friends to suicide as well. So we then went into schools and started doing a whole series of, uh, of workshops with Daniel Reagan, who is one of our photographers in the photography movement. Um, and we created a, 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 a workshops for, um, for the photography movement. And then I lost my job. And then we set up the uh, Show and Tell project during lockdown. And it was all about young people and trying to get to them. So that is where Nicole takes off and takes over. <laughs> Nicole. Sorry, but I thought what I would do is put the context of, of yeah. me being a young person all the way mm. through and how it's affected me photography. So. Thank you. So, yeah. um, I, I suppose it, it, this is such a, a multifaceted project. Um, but for me, my approach to it was perhaps more as a parent um, and as someone who at the, the very foothills of lockdown um, knew that schools being closed and losing that support of schools, both in social terms, safety terms, was going to have a, a terrible impact um, on children of all ages. Um, so because we'd lost this, this connection and, and kids were effectively, you know, had disappeared um, during lockdown, we wanted to create a technique which I found with my son at age seven had been incredibly powerful. Um, when he was seven years old, he pretty much stopped speaking and communicating with me, with the family at school. And there was, it was um, a, a really, really concerning situation. Um, and one day we went out and we went on a trip and he borrowed my phone, didn't speak to anyone, but just made off with my phone. And that evening I looked at my phone and there were many, many, many photographs that he'd taken of his own accord. And I looked at the photographs and I asked him to come and speak with me and talk to me about the photographs. And that was the first time we'd spoken properly in about 18 months. So this ability photography has as an interface to, um, for expression and connection is something that can be used as a parent, as a carer, in any situation um, and it was something which was a breakthrough for us being able to use imagery as this interface in what was a really difficult time for a seven-year-old <laughs> you've both shared that um, the impact of photography on your own um, situation your own lives um, could you expand on or have, uh, I know that you work with mental health professionals, um, what would their stance be on or how has photography been incorporated into some of the sessions you've worked with, um, uh, either with young people, the professionals that um, use photography? There's, I mean, I, I can um, answer a little bit of that. There, there's a huge pedigree in photography being used in cognitive therapy. So this is something which has been used for decades. It's, it's official. Um, and it's, there, there's a couple of ways that it's, that it's been used with such, with such success. And one is the act of photography to pick up a camera, mm. to focus, to create a composition, puts puts you into a different, completely different state um, and helps you enter what is so important for all of us for our well-being, which is a state of flow, a state of creative flow. So there is this really important sort of physical act which really decreases stress and anxiety. Um, and then afterwards, um, obviously, there's, there's the result of, of that photography, which are the images themselves. And they have the ultimate power to express who you are, how you feel, um, and if you use them correctly, you can connect through them. Um, and that's why you know, we have a slogan and a motto that our work is all about photography for life, not likes, um, because it's, it's a reconnection and a, you know, a reassessment of visual language so that young people can take can understand the power of imagery and use it to connect rather than compare. I think there's a lot of 
mm. huge amounts of problems how photography is being used for people to compare each other um and what we're about is young people using photography to connect with each other yeah and i think that we you know, we were we were very lucky to have a partner who in cisco who helped us to work with some amazing photographers and create we've now got eight workshops we each year we're in our second year now we've created four workshops a year so the first year we had ranking who did one on my mapping which gave the kids the ability to actually and we gave access to all of his library and rankings library and kids were had the ability to put their emotions to those images it's a great really amazing exercise for children to take so we did that in our first one the second one we did um we, we worked with emma hardy we did color and abstract and she talks about you know the abstract and how color can reflect she looks at the sky looks at it's getting kids to look up and down we then had an amazing photographer from france augusta with his brother sam who did one on portraiture so we spoke about different lighting techniques including rembrandt um, and split lighting then we had daniel reagan who's been a big supporter of us and he was a big part of, of, of the project before. He did one on journaling. He's he since a very, very young age has been using photo using a camera, using photographs to journal his life. So he did an amazing one on journaling. Um, and then we then the, the following year we've been with sort of all this year, we've been more about actual um it's more about subjects like sports, um uh street photography beauty and nature and the idea of obviously when we like nature connecting with uh with mindfulness so these workshops are obviously giving tips and tricks and techniques but embedded within that we've got a mental health expert um who has given a background to each of these image each of these workshops and a task um so that's that's been a great sort of part of each of the workshops but fundamentally each of them end in an exhibition so we ask the children how are you feeling and that has been the most powerful part of the whole project so you know along the way they've had the ability to learn photographs and mental health techniques but then we ask them and that is where it's been so powerful for us and you've seen some of the images you've got one of those images on your back wall because you're one of our judges mm -hmm. um you know it's been phenomenal um seeing these kids express their emotions and you know that nicole will talk about the ability you know how, how it changed her son we had Adnan. I mean, actually, Nicole, you talk about your son Adnan, and the other one is Caden, as a young boy this year, who I went to see up in Cambridgeshire, and his um, his he was born deaf, and his image alone is just so powerful. But it's the words, it's the words, the story behind it that encapsulate really the heartache and the imagery that really provokes such feeling and emotion. And I think you know that is what we're getting from the schools it's what we get from the teachers it's what we're getting from the kids we had over thirty-three thousand entries this year it's getting harder and harder for us to decide and put those images up you know proof in the pudding <laughs> i think um i will say this, so this image is a pen that is literally dismantled and the word that arman chose um, was dismantled and this was when we were in lockdown and I was very you know really deeply privileged and touched to be a judge so thank you very much for that but my then 14 year old daughter helped me choose so many of the images uh, it was almost impossible but this seemed to say something it seemed to ring about the fact that our lives had been dismantled and that also underneath was almost like a subheading which we will come back together again so it's really a lovely way of using images to get into get involved in language so I think that um, as a primary teacher there's so many opportunities and the films that you've just described um, and this year's films as well as last year's films are in real bank now have got some great ways that you could introduce uh, a, a really maybe year six I'm, I'm i'm gonna ask you a little bit about the a year below later on but say year six um or you know if you're working with year 10 uh, age 10 students they really easily engage yeah. with language 
is, is there anything you I, I have missed on that? I'm just imagining if yeah, people yeah, yeah. don't know what show and tell looks like, for example, or, yeah, I mean, or, or I'll, photography. I'll, I actually put these the proof of I actually put these workshops into practice with a youth centre called the Avenues Youth Centre, and was working with a lot. Some of the, the, the kids range were from sort of nine up to twelve. And myself, yeah, working with the, the leader at the avenues to decide which would work with those kids. But the ones that resonated, we did, were nature. So nature was a great one. We went out to, to, to Hampstead Heath with the kids and took photos amazing of flowers, fauna, animals. It was incredible um, to capture. And what was great was seeing these kids in the moment, in nature, calm. Um, that was a great one. We also did one with street photography, so we took them out into the local sort of area around sort of Labrick Grove. And they were taking pictures of high rise blocks, but also skate parks. These kids were loving taking pictures of reflection using some of the techniques that the, 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 the photographers had taught us. Um, and then we did Beauty, which is about kids finding their inner self with um, Danny Casario. That was an amazing one and seeing the kids really open up about what they felt about themselves, what would be their future selves. So, you know, a lot of these techniques and a lot of these workshops, you know, are really suitable for, for, for primary school um, children. Sorry, Nicole, do you want to add? Well, I, I, <clears throat> I always go back to the, um, how we were told that the younger children do not expect too much, uh, you know, that, yeah. the, that, that the first class would be a bit wobbly and a bit wibbly. Um, and <laughs> they were, they, it was a 10 year old that won. You know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it's they, you know, they do say that we are born creative and their ability to understand the brief is it's not a problem when you're when you understand really complex things. We, I think we're born complex and, and we get it and you can they totally understood um, how they could translate their emotion into a visual because the point of the point of this mm. is your emotion as a visual um so we we can't it's a three-part process it's find the emotion in the back of your head which is in the limbic system and it's called labeling and so you you name and you 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 put out your emotion and then we ask them to photograph that emotion so they can explore it more um, and it's really important to move emotions from the back of the brain to the front, because then your logical brain can do something about it. If you've just got feelings swirling around in the back, this is when they, you know it can be problematic. But it's this simple um, process of labeling the emotion, bring it to the bring it to the front of the, of the logical mind or the logical brain, um, and then um, we ask them to photograph it so they can explore it more, and then they can share that. Um, emotion if they want to um, but it's really important even if your feeling is good it's good to know that you're you know you're feeling positive if there are issues then it's really good to be able to un understand define and and share them so whether that's in the context of your peers with teachers with your parents um, and it's a simple technique um, we kind of call it um, say it shoot it share it um, and it's really simple to do um, and it can create really good connections and it's it's an unburdening and it's a it's a new way of thinking with you know a camera a piece of digital equipment which you already have but it's just using that habit in a in a new way for well-being thank you and I, i'm gonna ask you if a teacher obviously we all use our our smartphones you know they've, they've become part of our extensions of our hands <laughs> but uh, say you have um, you're in a class uh, primary school and teach had no uh, not other than doing uh, sort of selfies how would you start off how would a teacher a pri in primary level what, what kind of takeaway or what kind of hint or suggestion would you give to a primary uh, class who um, where would they begin do you think to really excite and ignite um, their, their students we all think that we are photographers I guess how would we stretch that I know there are videos and I think they're amazing but say we don't have access for that what, what else could we do to um, uh, 
far put far in the belly of um, photography being more than a say a handheld quick selfie. Oh. I think that um, I think you know what, what I said to you about mind mapping. I think the study, the study of photography, so the idea of going either into our archive or actually getting the teachers and the kids to find images themselves of things that evoke emotion, just so they can start really thinking about a photograph and what they see in that photograph. Mm -hmm. Get the emotion through an image will then provoke conversation. Will then get them inspired to go out and take photographs. Nicole, any again? Mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. Um, but I, th I think um, I think a lot of young people don't feel heard and feel they have no agency at all. Um, so we, we're, we're looking, you know, in the future at looking at how um, children would react to something like climate change, for example. And it's about being able to use the visual as an emotion and, and look at something and see how you can use visuals to be heard. Um, and if you understand the power of visuals, um, I think this could be in a classroom, it's like, what do we think about, you know, any, any manner of things about, I don't know, school dinners, you know, um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an ability to, to interact um, and to make your voice heard. Um, and I think it's something that, it's a habit to be, to be formed. Also then, you know, you speak about visual activism, mm -hmm. the idea of getting young people to really, you know, things that are really, you know, mean a lot to them. And, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to try and get young people, give young people a voice through photography and storytelling. So I think that's really a big part of what we do. You know, what was, what is the most powerful thing about a lot of these images, because you look at the images alone, you might go, well, that, that's not, you know, that's okay. It's an okay image, but it's the stories behind them that really resonate and make the difference. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're combining is visual literacy. Your visual literacy is that you've actually described a wonderful lesson or series of lessons beginning with effectively decoding or looking at the signs in an image, moving on to the wonderful idea of actually we can use this ourselves to persuade, to influence, and actually we are all activists. We, we can and should use visual literacy, which is effectively everywhere. And I, I can see that this is easily, even in any year group, I think, it, it, you've got your series of lessons there. And that's without even having access to the amazing resources and the photographers that you've you've worked with, which are are, are breathtaking actually, and and fill you. No, they do. They fill me with um, enthusiasm for visual literacy and photography. Um, they're incredible. So I would encourage the next stage would certainly be to <laughs> go online and have a look at, at your resources. So I guess my really my final question um, is when next year <laughs> will it run again <laughs> yes yes we're, 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 we are making sure we are putting in um we're putting in um lots of plans for next year um there are there will be specific things because we've kind of learned that we learn much from the teaching profession um and and um the schools who you know who, who work and, and input into the project that there is so, there are certain things which are difficult to do and that's help a child through transition um yes so a really key thing for us is to help young uh, our young ones finish primary school and be able to transition more easily in to um, into secondary um, and having spoken with some schools these would be um, techniques which we use from year five onwards and steve have you um would you add to that or are you hoping um, are you sure that we yeah can yeah no we, 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 we <laughs> um we're already working on the next four films um and nicole sort of let the cat out of the bag with one of those being climate but no it's good <laughs> and we are, you know, as Nicole said, we're going to do one on, on transition. Um, we're looking at one on music. So reimagining sort of song lyrics um, with photography. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I want to leave it there. But we are, we are progressing very well. And 
yeah, we hope the next four films are going to be even better. And um, I really hear that um, the transition, I think, was possibly the hardest ever for the young people who had been you know, locked out of school and then trying to transition to schools they probably hadn't even visited for some um, in the last two years. So incredibly hard. And it always is. It's filled with, you know, worries and concerns about how you're, you know, how you fit in. <laughs> um, but uh, do you think that uh, maybe students in uh, pupils in year five may even access some of your wonderful work? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it's, you know, and, and once again, all, all we can say is some of the most extraordinary photography we've seen have been from the younger children. Um, and it's an honour to um, show their work. Um, it really is extraordinarily intelligent. And they understand the superpowers of photography in that, you know, it can allow them to time travel. It, can create memories it can unite um the, the the young ones really understand what we call what we kind of term that the superpowers of um, of the camera and photography yes uh, and the voices of young people which actually is <laughs> a nice segue <laughs> into um letting um everyone know and i hope that people will join us um as part of our conference um the photography movement and some of the young people and some of uh, some very big ambassadors of NSAID are all going to get together and on the 9th of June 6 p.m to 7 30 p.m uh, you are all welcome to join us and uh, we will have um, the winner or one of the winners um, we'll have some students who are in the low years and some in the old years uh, talking to an artist, a mental health campaigner or advocate. Uh, some of you will know her, uh, Sarah Graham. She will be talking um, to students about mental health, about navigating uh, mental health and uh, her story, which I encourage everyone to join for that. But also we will have one of the winners, um, uh, Adnam, who will be talking about um, show and tell about photography movement and um, we also will be launching on that evening uh, an amazing prize for um, uh, we're, so, we're so grateful for you allowing us to do this will be two amazing uh, photography sets of equipment I think actually Steve as the chief <laughs> photographer <laughs> or the most experienced amongst us perhaps could you share a little bit about what those prizes are yes they are going to be we've got so we've got a canon slr camera um which is sort of yeah sort of a, a fair, i'd say medium to top end of the of canon's range we've got um we've got a light box kit so the kids will be able to actually set themselves up and do a sort of studio environment imagery um and they've got reflectors and memory cards i think that's it nicole is that i think that i think we've got everything there so basically is a studio is a pro oh and of course a tripod so you've got a tripod soft box you've got a light box you've got reflectors and you've got this canon slr which are going to be a price for our, our young people yes and so we encourage you to join us on that evening we'll let you know how you could get involved and be um win one of those two amazing sets for your school. It'll be fantastic. Um, come and join us and we'll let you know um, what you need to do. Get involved in the show and tell, be involved in our evening of, of uh, discussion and sharing and uh, really knowing what uh, photography, how photography has impacted um, in the, some of the winners who've been involved in the project. Brilliant. Have I said uh, everything that uh, you know <laughs> and think, how I you think... will help us that evening? <laughs> I think so, yes. I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Steve, Nicole. Uh, it's always a delight to talk with you. I'm amazed at so. what has been going on. The sheer numbers that entered this year, at which were how many? 33,000. 33,000. Um, it's incredible and uh, it's just grown and grown and do get involved, do have a look on uh, the photography movement's website, be inspired by that 
uh, as adults, but also be inspired by the young people who got involved in, in show and tell, who shared their, their photo, their feelings. It's, uh, it's quite amazing. And we hope you'll join us on the Thursday, the 9th of June, 6 p.m. So thank you ever so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you if you're looking at this later on in the week, the month, the year. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you very much. Thanks.